sorry, called, okay, the meet, called the meeting to order for the Public Works and Transportation Committee. Mr. Yanis, would you lead in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Place your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag. The agenda, that's, was that okay, City Clerk? Um, yes, in the roll call, Chief. Okay. Okay, Member Flynn? Present. Member McDonald? Here. And Chair Perello? Here. The agenda for this meeting was posted in the City Hall kiosk on Tuesday, December 3rd. Thank you. Okay. And um, I don't see anything for public comment. Do we have anyone public comment here? No, moving on. The consent agenda, approval of the minutes to have the board committee members had an opportunity to recommend to approve the minutes second okay um, all in favor aye, aye. opposed abstain okay. okay the first item under reports public works department I'll let the staff presenter read the recommendation from now on but public works the subject is an award contract a 8187 to on-call sidewalk grinding to BPH incorporated Good morning, Chairman, Good morning. Uh, committee members. My name is Philip Schweider. I am the streets manager for streets department for the streets. Welcome aboard. Thank you. So the city of Oxnard Public Works Department agreement A8187 for on-call sidewalk grinding, sidewalk curb and gutter grinding services. The Public Works Transportation Committee recommend that the city council award and authorize the mayor to execute agreement A8187 in an amount not to exceed, not to exceed, excuse me, for uh, agreement in an amount not to exceed 800,000 with BPR incorporated. For a three year on call sidewalk curb and gutter grinding service. The $500,000 portion of this project will be used in the streets division and $300,000 allocated to special districts division. The city has approximately 650 miles of sidewalks and 644 miles of curb and gutters. Grinding sidewalk, curb, gutter, and surfaces with a vertical displacement ranging between one-fourth and two inches at various locations throughout the city. There are many things that cause varying degrees of lift, such as age, poor construction, deferred maintenance, and tree and vegetation roots. Sidewalk grinding is the most common and cost-effective method to correct lifted sidewalks. Grinding is less expensive than removal and replacement of concrete and can extend the life of sidewalks that otherwise might be prematurely replaced. Currently, the Streets Division has a backlog of approximately 350 locations and special districts. This contract will assist to address the backlogs as well as the other areas identified by streets and special district staff. The notice of inviting formal bids was advertised September 5th, 2019 with all bids due September 23rd, 2019. Two bids were received, BPR Incorporated and Precision Concrete Cutting. The lowest responsive bidder is BPR. And just to let you know that we sent this out twice because we only had one bid at one time just to make it fair for the public. The amount not to exceed 800,000 with 500,000 specifically assigned to the streets division and 300,000 specifically assigned to special assessments district. 
staff recommends that the city council award the contract for this project BPR in the amount not to exceed 800,000. This is a three-year agreement for concrete grinding services on an on-call basis as requested through task orders. Contractor will supply monthly reports identifying completed grinds, locations, and photographs of locations where additional work is needed. The $500,000 streets division portion of this project will be supported through Measure O funding, Fund 104, available in Project MO 3102, Alley and Roadway Repair. The funding will be allocated as follows. Physical year 2019 to 2020, 120,000. 2020 to 2021, 190,000. 20 to 21 to 2022, 190,000. Funding sources for the 300,000 allocated for special districts division shall be determined by task order department upon the services identified. The department project manager will ensure sufficient funding of task prior to initiating task orders or incurring services. Funding will be used in the amount of 100,000 per year for the duration of the three years contract based on available funds. Again, this is for 2019 to 2020, uh, 100,000, 2020, 21, 100,000, and 2021 to 2022, 100,000. This concludes my presentation and open for questions. And again, we have, um, unless a late arrival gives a speaker card, <clears throat> I have no public comments. Do any of the council members have questions? <laughs> yeah, no. uh, number one, welcome on board. I haven't met you yet. Um, It'll get easier, more relaxed, relax a little bit. And it, and Thank you uh, very much. I, none of these guys bite, I promise you. <laughs> and, <Ryan does> <laughs> uh, the uh, comment that you made when you went out for a bid a second time because there was only one, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. I, I support this wholeheartedly. One question. We list the number of um, sites. Is there a priority list that when neighbors, as of this Sunday, when I got nailed about my sidewalk cracks, can go and find where they stay on the, on the list of priority, like number two or number 406? I mean, is there some list prioritizing which ones get fixed first? And possibly a public works director would answer that. Te technically, there is no list. The, the 311 Accela program has been what we've been working with. Um, we are um, reactive rather than proactive, more so than anything else. Um, but uh, it does get on a list, and we're able to go to it to that specific location if it's in that 311. Okay. So, but in getting on 311, they are, I assume, time stamped was to win the earliest, like a year ago, or oh, that's, that's my concern about. Correct. Priority. We're working from the, the, the lowest earliest. Year, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any. Second. Okay. Uh, do city do we need a roll call on this? Do you want? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion approves. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Next item, um, I'll have the staff read the recommendation, please. The next item is approve an agreement number 8819-19-PW with Anderson Refrigeration Incorporated. Good morning, Chair and Committee Members. Todd Housley, Environmental Resources Division Manager. Staff is recommending that the Public Works and Transportation Committee recommend that the City of Council approve and authorize the Mayor to execute Agreement Number 8819-19-PW with Anderson Refrigeration Incorporated for a four-year term for an amount not to exceed 200000 At Del Norte, we receive, process, sort, and transfer municipal solid waste and source separated recyclables for the city of Oxnard and most communities in the West County area. Through this process, and as well um, as our neighborhood cleanups and 311 illegal dumping program, we receive a lot of appliances, um, 
refrigerators, anything with a refrigerant or, or a um, coolant inside of it must be, um, there's an extra step for processing. Uh, the state DTSC and uh, state and federal EPA require us to capture this Freon and to um, uh, process it through a uh, qualified contractor. So every year we receive, process, and extract about 2,000 cooling appliances. So we went to bid in uh, March 4th of 2019, and just as Phil stated prior, we had one bid. So we went out to bid again on April 3rd. Bids closed on the 10th, and we received two bids at that time. Scope of work was to supply all labor, equipment, materials, and incidentals per city procurement rules and EPA, uh, state and federal EPA standards to extract, remove, and process refrigerant from appliances collected at Del Norte for a term of four years. So here are the bid results, and I'm going to do a little more explaining than what the slide says here because, um, as you can see, um, as you will see with the uh, recommendation, uh, we're asking you to um, approve Anderson Refrigeration. Now, that is a $30 bid. The second bidder was Catraba refrigeration at $15 per unit. However, they could not meet the terms of our procurement insurance and um, other requirements. So we had to uh, determine them non-responsive and we are recommending Anderson refrigeration. Funds are available in the ER Enterprise Fund account number to cover this $50,000 for the remainder of this, fiscal, remainder of this fiscal year and we will budget accordingly uh, for the remainder of the term of this proposed agreement. That concludes my presentation and I can answer any questions at this time. Number one, again, thank you very much for going out for second bid. When there's only one bid, it bothers me personally, but other people have contacted me, they don't like the, and it does a lot, I believe, for the faith of the public into our city. The second is the company that takes the Freon, what do they do with it? There's a new law um, in January where there'll be certain types of um, Freon and coolants that will no longer be allowed in the, to be sold or reproduced in the United States. So currently the method is a little bit different than it will be after the first of the year. But basically what they're doing is they're going to state and federal agencies or uh, processing firms that are licensed and approved to collect it and to store it, reprocess, clean it up and reprocess it for reuse. After January, they will not be reusing the, I, I believe it's, um, I'm sorry, the name escapes me, but the, the number 22, um, it's, it's a level of coolant that's being used. Once that's recovered, um, it, they'll work that out of the, of the recycling system and we'll no longer use it. Okay, the and then the final, the final question. Thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. Final question. When we build up an inventory of material that they have to come and suck the Freon out, how big of an inventory do we build up and how long do we have to wait before they come to take, take it off our hands? Once an agreement's in place, they're usually there within a day. And what we like to do is there's, there's a, a sweet spot of allowing a certain amount to collect so we can bring them on board and we don't have... Um, as many trips, um, they're coming less frequently, but we don't want it to get too big because then it, it gets in the way of our uh, operation. So right now it's gotten a little bigger than the normal, but we're, we're going through the process and uh, as soon as council approves this recommendation, uh, we plan on having that back down to our um, probably a, a monthly um, service level. And, and uh, on that, I can appreciate staff and I appreciate you watching that because if we end up having one of them that's leaking before they get here, it's on us. And so thank you. Thanks for watching it. Do we have a recommendation from staff? Move the recommended action. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, me too. Aye. Um, opposed? Abstain? Okay. Next item, please. The next, the next item is... Um, Award First Amendment for Agreement Number A-7937 for Pearl Usus Incorporated. We'll have staff read the recommendation, please. Good morning, Chair and Committee members. Uh, my name is Jan Hauser, Wastewater Division Manager. Uh, 
So our recommendation is that the Public Works and Transportation Committee recommend the City Council approve and authorize the Mayor to execute a First Amendment to Agreement A-7937 with ProUsis Incorporated for supervisory control and data acquisition system <coughs> support services for the water, wastewater, and recycled water systems. This First Amendment will increase the cost of services in the amount of $180,000, bringing the total contract amount to $780,000, and it will extend the contract through June 30th of 2020. So a, a little bit of background, uh, SCADA systems, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with them, are complex computer-based communication systems that staff uses to monitor our systems on a 24-hour basis. So they're integral to the, uh, the operation of all three of these systems. So a little, uh, a little bit more on what we actually monitor. So for the water SCADA system, uh, we uh, uh, continuously monitor the water treatment plant or the desalter plant, uh, all of our 10 drinking water wells, six blending stations, and then we have six remote moni uh, pressure monitoring stations. For our recycled water system, we uh, monitor the, the treatment plant, the AWPF, uh, and we monitor the pressure in the distribution system uh, on that, uh, uh, as part of that system. Wastewater, uh, we monitor all of the processes at the wastewater treatment plant, and then we also monitor the 15 sewage pumping stations we have out in the system. So the fiscal impact, this is an existing uh, contract uh, that uh, is divided, will be divided equally among the three uh, funds, uh, and we have it budgeted $60,000 equally uh, across the three systems. So with that, uh, I'm happy to take any questions. No question. One public speaker, Ms. Pat Brown. I'm, I'm sorry, that, you're on four. You're on the next one. Number four? Yeah, yeah. I apologize. Next. You're the next item. I apologize. Um, any councilman's comments? Okay, a uh, couple of questions. Thank you for the presentation. The electric, these are electrical-based systems. If Correct. we lose power, what do we have in the way of backup? So at, at each one of these systems, we have backup generators that would allow the systems to continue to operate. Okay, and the second, I appreciate you your drawing <laughs> showing us. In your professional opinion, is there anything else that we need to have SCADA monitoring on that it's currently we don't? Uh, no, I don't, I don't believe so. We have everything monitored. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> just a comment. We have had, uh, recently we had some fires at the uh, refuse facility. Is there anything where SCADA would help us in a situation like that? Mm, I, I'm not sure. I don't know, Todd. Do you, I don't know if you've thought about it, Todd. Or... Um, yes, the answer to that question is yes. And we currently have video which is very helpful in not only identifying um, an ignition point, but um, in conjunction with our 24-hour security, um, that helps us identify the fire. But additional um, sensors and things like that, technology is always improving, and, and it, would not be, uh, it wouldn't be worse than it is now, put okay. it that way. Thank you very much. It, and um, on that point, if the city manager and resource thinks there's something to do, at least they'll consider it. Um, do we have a recommendation on this item? Move the recommended action. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Next item, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. The next item is um, <coughs> award blanket order for Maneri Signs <coughs> Incorporated for directional wayfinding and traffic control signs. And staff, pre please read the recommendation. Chairman, council members. So the City of Oxnard Public Works Department finished street signs purchase order with Minuri Sign Company. Recommendation that the Public Works and Transportation Committee recommend that the City Council award and authorize the mayor to execute a purchase order for finished signage and supplies for an amount not to exceed 260000 with Minuri 
sign company. Street Signs Divisions maintains over 20,000 signs within its city limits. City must meet regulatory compliance standards for directional and traffic control signs. Uh, traffic signs communicate rules, warnings, and guidance for safe navigations of roadways. Upgrading stop signs will be one of our main priorities. Uh, new signs will meet compliance standards set forth by the Federal Highway Administration rules and regulations and guided by the manual of uniform traffic control devices. Examples of signs needed replacements, as we can see here in the photo, is if they're damaged, they could be faded, broken, corroded, or missing. The notice uh, inviting formal bids uh, advertised August 28, 2019. The bids due October 3rd, 2019. Four bids were received. Minuri Incorporated was the lowest responsive bidder out of the four. Sufficient funding available for <coughs> in physical year 2019-20, uh, Streets Maintenance Fund 105, and this would be for the years of 2019-2020 of 120,000, and then 2020-21, 140,000, the total contract of 260,000. This will conclude my presentation. If you have any questions, we have one public speaker, Ms. Pat Brown, please. I hope this is involving the getting the trucks off of Oxnard Boulevard. If that's not involved in this, then we'll have a, a whole nother bunch of signs that are going to have to be redone. Uh, since I don't have all of your information, there's no way for me to know. But um, the idea of getting the trucks off of Oxnard Boulevard is going to require taking down a couple of white signs, big white signs that are s going southbound just before you get to Oxnard Boulevard ex exit off of the freeway. There's two of them. They say the same thing, and they direct the, the trucks off onto Oxnard Boulevard from the north. Um, and, and they're way too wordy, and there's no way that anybody, if they're going 60 miles an hour, there's no way anybody's going to read the whole thing. And so they're, they're useless anyway, but they're making it worse. They're, they're directing the trucks off at Oxnard Boulevard. What we need is to direct the trucks off at Rice Avenue instead, altogether. And we need uh, exit, uh, truck exit signs for those, but they don't have to be big fancy things because if, it's, if it has very many words in it, the people won't read them, you know, so you gotta make them uh, simple, very, very simple. The, the small trucks, are okay on Oxnard Boulevard. I'm talking about the trucks with the separate trailer, long, long trailer that's behind the attached, separately attached to the truck um, itself. So anyway, that's what the ones that I'm talking about. There has to be some signs at the, Ox, at the uh, Five Points intersection because they come in on on uh, Woolly Road, and then they want to turn right and go north, and then another right onto 7th Street to get in to the place. Well, they should have just made a, 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 a turn before they even came on to Oxnard Boulevard. Uh, that, that they should be getting off, uh, turning in in the entrances on Woolly Road, and there are several of them for the trucks. And they totally ignore that. A lot of them do. And, and they, that's going to have to stop. Um, as well as at the Five Points intersection, you've got to have a sign that says, no trucks heading north on Oxnard Boulevard. So that has to, that has to be added. Um, the signs on the freeways are done by uh, not through us, but we have to let them know the Transportation Commission over in, Ox uh, over in Camarillo 
at those meetings because that's how I got the signs for the for the CAF uh, Aviation Museum. That's how I got them is I had to go over there and, and do a little speech for three minutes and tell Thank them what we needed. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, yes, uh, Chair Perello and Committee, Rosemary Gaglioni, Public Works Director. We are continuing to work with Caltrans. To, to you know, they do things on their schedule. We have completed all of our portion of this. We just have to keep talking to them and and uh, keep pressure on, reminding them that signs do need to be changed. And yes, Ms. Brown is correct. We're not in, ch in charge of those signs. This contract is going to help us to get our signs updated that are our signs within the city limits that that we need to do by uh, to, to be in compliance with state regulations. Thank you very much. Thank you for answering that. And Ms. Brown, thank you for bringing that to our attention. I, I wish I'd have known that because I have a standing meeting with District 7 Director every Friday or every month, and it was last Friday I could have given him a, a gentle jab, but I, I would be happy to intercede if you, if you want. Uh, certainly. We can, uh, we can provide you with the information uh, and so that you can do that. And also, we will be having the, our traffic engineering consultant look at, all of the, look at the sign plan for all of this to see what needs to be done. Um, everyone should remember that trucks that have a destination off of Oxnard Boulevard can still drive down Oxnard Boulevard. This is we're trying to discourage the through traffic. Anything I can do to help, I'm there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Move the, move the recommended action. I, I've got one question. For oh, you yes, sir. In terms of the wayfinding signs, several years ago we yeah. put a lot of wayfinding signs downtown and they faded almost immediately and they look pretty terrible. Um, is there any kind of guarantee that these signs will last a certain amount of time before they fade, or do we have a way built in to say, hey, you need to fix this, or or just once we buy it, it we're just stuck with it? Um, it just needs to be changed. Uh, there is no longevity. It just depends which sign is facing towards the sun that can get faded faster. Um, there is a protective screen on there that's more due to uh, graffiti prevention. But uh, there's nothing really to prevent the sun from fading the sign, um, you know. But it, it'll last a lot longer. To usually. Okay, and it, it, to me, it just makes us look not the greatest when we buy something and that fades within six months to a year, and then we and we allow it to stay there for however long because we either don't have the budget to replace it or, or fix it or whatever. So, just food for thought for the future. For sure. And I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank uh, you. Opposed. Abstain. Thank you, and thank you for the presentation. And I agree with Councilman McDonald. Um, item number five. The subject is award solicitation of P PW twenty twelve for supply of chemicals required for water recycled water and wastewater treatment. And staff, please read the recommendation. Hi. Good morning, Mr. Chair, uh, committee members. Uh, my name is Tian. I'm the Assistant Public Works Director. Um, the recommendation is that the Public Works and Transportation Committee recommend that the City Council and approve and authorize the Mayor to execute the following. First one, purchase orders for supply and delivery of non-crucial chemicals to the City of Oxnard Wastewater Treatment Plant, Headworks Facility, Advanced Water Purification Facility, Water Campus, and Water Blending Station Number 3 for a three-year <coughs> period. Second, Award purchase orders to the following vendors with three-year estimated totals. Argo Chemicals, King Lee Technologies, Mile Chemical Company, North Star Chemical, PVS Technologies. Number three, award change orders to the following vendors with three-year adjusted estimated totals. JCI Jones Chemicals um, increased to 103000 and Univar USA increased uh, by 56,000 and change. Number four, allow the purchase, purchasing manager to approve annual unit cost adjustments that remain within the not to exceed limit of all purchase orders combined. Um, Committee, before we get into um, the chemical bids and the bid results, let's first take a quick look at um, uh, 
treatment facilities for water, wastewater, and recycled water. We do use a lot of chemicals, and we list them here and, um, for the, our presentations. For example, uh, just for disinfections for drinking water, we use a combination of sodium hypochlorite and aqueous ammonia to, uh, to do the uh, disinfections. So for wastewater, uh, we use uh, chemicals for various uh, treatment, such as uh, for odor control, uh, odor reduction treatment, uh, ferric chloride for primary treatment. Basically what you do is you combine all the inorganics uh, uh, together in a tank so that they can uh, sink down to the bottom to clear up your water prior to the biological treatment. And then at the end, um, after you chlorinate it with sodium hypochlorite, we still have to uh, dechlorinate because the treated, a portion of the treated wastewater is going to the ocean, ocean outfall. For the recycled water treatment, um, we use sulfuric acid to condition the water prior to reverse osmosis treatment. And then we use many forms of chemicals for uh, the uh, membrane cleaning, uh, both for the microfiltration and reverse osmosis. And then we use hydrogen peroxide in combination with UV for powerful disinfections. <clears throat> so the chemical... Excuse me, Tian. I just... We're going to quiz the chair of the Public Works Committee about that process <laughs> when this goes to the full council. <laughs> so um, the, the Public Works Department issued a uh, request for bid for chemicals August 19, and we have a total of 11 chemicals, and there were 19 items uh, for bid. And we received a total of 15 bids, um, and <coughs> on... November 19, we have the first package, what we call the crucial chemicals. Uh, we received council approval on that. And the difference between today's chemicals and crucial chemical is they're equally important. What we define as crucial chemical is that the chemicals that they're, they're degraded quickly and we use large amount of them. And even though we have a large storage tanks, you know, within a week or so, we have to call the chemical company. Those items that we went through the city manager office before November 19 just requested that it move quicker. For this one here, they're equally important, but they don't degrade as much, and so in some instances, we use them less often. So here are the bits uh, for the water, for aqueous ammonia and anti-scalants, uh, and would happy to say that the ammonia cost for this round is a little bit cheaper than our current prices. For recycled water, um, they look pretty similar. Um, I, I believe with the exceptions of sodium hydroxide, um, the price has gone down from $1.80 to $0.92. Um, for wastewater, um, it's, uh, uh, it's pretty similar. So <clears throat> for the total cost, um, we <coughs> estimated that um, for the next three years, uh, the water, wastewater, and recycled water facility will spend a total of about $1.3 million just on chemical. And for financial impact, um, the current year status is that it's all um, budgeted accordingly in the respective O&M budget. And then for the next fiscal year, we'll budget accordingly um, in our uh, O&M budget. So that concludes uh, our presentations, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. I have no speaker cards. Um, council members, you have a comment? I'm just, um, I'd like to say I'm, I'm not surprised that there are not speaker cards. A um, couple of questions with respect to the anhydrous ammonia. If we were to acquire a larger tank, is there a restriction to how much anhydrous ammonia we can keep on site potentially because of a potential leak in the fire department and the restrictions and being an extremely hazardous material? Um, and the re any residential near the waste thing, are there restrictions? Because is there, 
would it be smart for us to investigate getting larger capacity to store some of this material on site, get a better price, or the fact that it degrades, we don't want to carry more on site, or it's too risky insurance-wise? Um, um, Council, my opinion is that the current storage, storage volume at the blending station number one for uh, liquid ammonia, um, basically, I believe is appropriate. Um, I believe that the previous design team who made that decision, it's not contingent on whether you're trying to reduce the storage amount to avoid any uh, public notification. I believe that the water division did go through a public notification process and it properly documented in an emergency response um, booklet in their office there. Um, I believe is it's had to do with you don't want to store too long. I think usually around two weeks time, you probably wanted another truck to roll in and, and to fill that. Okay. Any other concerns or anything you have? Uh, no, not at this okay, point. Thank you. Do we have a recommendation? Move Move. Approval. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. The next item is uh, number six. The subject is an agreement dash 8191 for tree maintenance service PW 20 22. And please, staff, read the recommendation. Thank you. Good morning, uh, morning. Chair Perello, committee members. My name is Jerry Cooper. I am project manager for special assessment districts. And today I will be requesting a recommendation by the Public Works and Transportation Committee to recommend that the City Council award and authorize the mayor to execute agreement number 8191 with Brightview Tree Service Incorporated for a five-year term with a not to exceed amount of $2.7 million for tree maintenance services and authorize a budget appropriation in the amount of $180,000 for various special districts. Um, Public Works is responsible for about 56,000 trees within the city of Oxnard and with limited number of uh, staff that are dedicated to tree service, uh, we need an agreement to maintain all of those trees throughout the city of Oxnard for both the General Fund Parks Division as well as the Special Districts Division of Public Works. Scope of service for this uh, agreement is very, very vast. Um, it is not only tree trimming services, but aesthetic pruning, palm trees, tree removal, uh, planting of new trees, emergency response, uh, allocating, um, excuse me, um, going through and identifying our tree inventory. Additionally, looking at uh, root pruning services, uh, grinding, root grinding services, um, just a whole large scope of service work that we didn't have in our previous contract. Uh, during the 1920 fiscal year budget, the city council authorized $250,000 for parks, medians, and parkways through the uh, general fund for the parks division. Um, special district has allocated about $650,000 uh, with that $180,000 budget appropriation moving money from special district fund balance for various special districts into the operating budget for this year to uh, do some additional work. Um, primarily a lot of it will be for the purposes of root pruning, which is something we have desperately needed um, for a number of years in special districts. Uh, the notice inviting bid went out September 19th and uh, bids were due back on October 7th. We received two bids, Brightview Tree Care Service and West Coast Arborist. Brightview was the lowest bidder at $7,270. That is a cumulative bid of uh, per item pricing uh, on the bid sheet. So um, if a tree, for one tree it was $85, each item on the bid sheet had a separate price and it came out to $7,270. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Um, special districts division will be using funds already appropriated uh, and the parks division again has $250,000 allocated in this fiscal year not to an exceed with the uh, special district 650,000 and a 2.7 million dollar not to exceed five year agreement. The special districts division will be allocating funds via task order that will go through budget review each time 
special districts assigns work and will be approved based on funding within that special district. That's the end of my presentation. I am happy to take any questions. Quick question. I have no speaker cards. Um, Who's the tree trimming service that we're using now under contract? Currently, we have West Coast Arborist. And that contract was done uh, through um, a piggyback agreement for the city of Glendale uh, when we entered into that agreement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, you know, when we're talking about, I'm trying to uh, get the big picture um, because these are um, requested amounts to obviously continue these services. So looking at the big picture, um, the city council, as you mentioned, allocated a quarter of a million dollars in, the, in this current fiscal year for um, parks and, and, and streets and roadways and things of that nature. What's the actual need? Um, do we have an estimated need about, I mean, if we're spending 250, um, what should we be spending? So uh, Brian Yanez can speak to general fund. Um, special districts uh, is able to allocate funding based on uh, assessments. So there are those districts that we have the ability to escalate their assessments to meet the needs, um, but he can speak to the general fund portion. Thank you. And, and Mr. Giannis, I'm just looking at ballpark, so a ballpark no. figure, not the exact figures. All right. Good morning, uh, Chair and Committee members. Brian Giannis, Assistant Public Works Director. Great question. So uh, currently with the $250,000, we are at about a 35-year cycle to, to trim all our trees in, in the city of Oxnard. So we'd like to be at a 10-year, which is approximately $900,000. That would be the budget that we would need annually to provide a 10-year. Um, these numbers fluctuate on the budget in regards to the life cycle because when you go out to bid, you get new prices for bid pruning. So I, um, it could vary on the amount we need, but this contract we have for five years, uh, it's probably $900,000 for a 10-year cycle that would enable us to get our 56,000 trees done in 10 years. So um, I, I just... <clears throat> wanted that said because I think the committee understands uh, and the council understands, uh, certainly the staff too, that a 35-year tree trimming cycle is not sustainable. Uh, we know that. And the only thing I can say that provides any relief, now the rain is providing some relief, but the only th reason you were talking about fluctuations and in my mind it was, well, during the most um, prevalent uh, periods of the drought, um, we have trees that are dying, so there's less need, you know, if the tree is dying or if we were to allow it to die. But you're saying that um, for just to get so the committee understands it and, and we can get the council to understand it, if we are on the recommended 10-year tree trimming cycle, then that budget would be closer to 900000 or a million dollars a year. So approximately we need to spend four times the amount of money to be on the 10-year cycle uh, as opposed to what we're spending now for a 35-year cycle. And it, yes, and it would also have to be for 10 years. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I understand that. Yeah. Um, right, so it's a more of a $9, uh, nine million, $10 million price tag rather than, you know, the current. And then um, the other thing I wanted to ask is uh, to Ms. Cooper about just the, um, what she just stated about the revenue sources. So how does that look for those LMDs right now? Do we have any idea how that is for them um, because we're talking about the difference between general fund maintained areas versus areas that collect money to do that. Right, so special districts is very unique in that there are landscape maintenance districts and community facilities districts that fund their maintenance. Uh, we do have landscape maintenance districts that are underfunded, that do not have escalators in them, that will not receive the tree maintenance that they need because their particular special district has a cap on it and they currently cannot 
um, get even close to fund regular maintenance within their district. Um, that's why we're encouraging those uh, LMDs to work with the city for a potential uh, restructure of their assessment district. We do have other landscape maintenance <coughs> district and community facilities districts that have adequate funding. So what we do is we work on a program of projects and we um, budget each year what we believe they will need for tree maintenance services. Ms. Cooper, thank you very much for providing that um, information. With that, um, the uh, special districts and working with them to potentially adjust what they were assessed. What is a timeline, a realistic timeline for us doing that? Uh, when will we start it and are we starting it now and how are we going about it? I would just recommend that residents contact the special districts division with regards to that. It can be a 12 to 18 month process and it really depends on the particular district and um, um, aside um, from this, uh, it really is uh, another council item. Right, and then I, I guess with my question on that is just a, a quick answer in the context of that's how long it might take once maybe it's initiated, but what's the city plan in terms of the special districts? I mean, is it like five years? Like within the next five years, we will have gone to every one of those special districts and at least given them the choice to opt for a higher assessment if necessary to provide adequate funding? We're always giving them a choice and we're always working with them to engage them. Okay. Um, we do have a list of uh, about 12 districts that we are working with right now um, and that will come back on a, on a later uh, council Thank you. agenda item. Thank you very much. Brian. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, specific question with respect to this. If we do have a landscape maintenance district or a community facilities district and a tree is dead and in, in danger of falling down but they don't have any funds to take care of it, does the city take care of that? So we would first try to do it in-house um, because it costs us less money to be able to do it in-house with one of our staff for removal. Um, we always wanna make sure that we're removing something that's gonna be a danger um, and could uh, result in any kind of actions against the city. Um, and, and so we work creatively to try and, and make it work to get that taken out. Okay, um, but thank we do have, within this contract, we will have emergency response um, and, and removal ability. Thank you. And you mentioned you're working with 12 districts, and is that 12 districts to potentially have them decide if they want to increase their fees? Correct. Out of how many districts? Uh, we well, have? there are 40 plus assessment districts. We're looking at a total of 27 districts that have a need to convert from a landscape maintenance district to a community facilities district because they have. Um, and for one reason or another, they're either capped, they have a utility cap within their assessment district um, or, or they're max assessed. Okay, and again, thank you for the information. Um, we all get a lot of calls from people that want their trees fixed and we get calls and I just got one yesterday pointed. The guy wants to pay to have his own tree trimmed. Is that a policy the city of Oxnard does? So we have, allow? We, we have been working with the city uh, attorney's office to uh, craft the ability for residents to fund their own tree trimming, uh, especially in districts that are underfunded. Um, and I would suggest that any resident within the special districts division um, contact us and we can put together um, some directive for them. Uh, we are requesting that they utilize a vendor that already has uh, insurance on file with the city. Um, and, and we have a process that we are working through to provide them approval to have that um, those trees trimmed. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Um, do we have a recommendation? Move the recommended action. Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, next item. And thank you again. Next item is um, three year agreement A8196 for citywide on call fencing, insulation, and repair services. And staff, please read the recommendation. It's me again. <laughs> The uh, Special Districts Division and uh, Public Works are requesting that the Public Works and Transportation Committee recommend to the City Council to award and authorize the Mayor to Execute Agreement 8196 with Quality Fence Company Incorporated in the amount of $300,000 for on-call fencing installation and repair services. Uh, the Public Works Department is comprised of multiple divisions that maintain 
uh, fencing throughout, fencing infrastructure throughout the city. Um, you see it in your neighborhoods, perimeter fencing, detention basin fencing, um, fencing, wood fencing, metal fencing, uh, multiple types of fencing that I'm sure you notice gets uh, damaged and vandalized on a regular basis. Um, so this would be a citywide contract that would be managed through Public Works, Special Districts Division, and the Facilities Division. The notice of inviting bid went out on October 10th and was due back on the 25th. We did have two bidders, Fenceworks and Quality Fence Company and Quality Fence Company was the lowest bidder at $6,857. That is a price for multiple types of fencing that was given by Linear Foot. Um, again, the agreement will authorize a three-year on-call contract for the amount of $300,000. There's no appropriation needed at this time, and these projects will be uh, requested through task order and funded only if there is available budget for um, that district or division to accommodate the work. <laughs> That's the end of my presentation, and I'm happy to take any questions. I have no public speakers. <laughs> Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you very much. Um, any items for future agendas? I, I don't have anything for a future agenda, but I just wanted to ask staff. I was talking with the person yesterday about uh, the Watershed Protection District channel along Ventura Roads from Woolley down to uh, wherever it terminates. I think down to Channel Islands Boulevard. And the person was telling me that apparently there are homeless folks storing their stuff in there now and I explained to them that it's not a city channel it belongs to to the county of Ventura I'm wondering if we can reach out to watershed protection district and and have them take a look at it and also um, they're complaining about the oleanders on the south side of Woolley Road between Ventura and I guess Patterson if somebody could just take a look at those for trash and overgrowth so um, there's not anything that needs to come back to us it's just what I'm thinking of but I ask otherwise I forget Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and uh, uh, thank you very much. And I'm, I'm glad that um, committee member McDonald uh, just uh, mentioned that. One of the things I've noticed, um, and it doesn't, again, necessarily need to be a future agenda item unless it, it involves an appropriation, but I've noticed at, at many different spots throughout the city, more than usual, um, just uh, big piles of trash. I, I, I have no idea if that's um, related to the homeless issue, but I've just noticed big piles of trash and just indiscriminate places. And I'm just um, requesting that environmental resources, I know they have a, a special group that goes and picks up trash, that um, there are limitations if they're, if someone owns the, like a shopping cart and things like that. I know that there are certain restrictions. This does not appear to be shopping cart related. It's just a bunch of trash dumped. I, I have no idea of where it's coming from and how. And if I could find some of those locations, I could certainly refer it to staff, but I would like them to be more attentive to it. We also recommend that uh, as you're out there, when you see these kinds of situations, that you use the 311 app, because that gets it a record of it formally and helps us to track. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the one of the public comment speakers mentioned Oxnard Boulevard. We can get it a little bit of an update in the future agenda, you know, what the transition will be. But I would like to uh, really piggyback on the two members of the committee. Um, 311 is a, is a good service, but uh, we have tremendous good men and women that work for this community on the payroll of the city of Oxnard. But when I know specific sites will have stored up shopping carts, and it'll be over a week, over two weeks. And we have city vehicles, city employees, elected officials driving these streets. Somebody's got to start calling 311 to pick it up because um, we're not doing it, and uh, it just looks like hell. And I do see the, the dumped garbage. It looks like somebody came, went to a laundromat, robbed everything out of a laundromat, and dumped it in one site. And you're like, what is a problem? Um, I want to compliment and critique the the presentations we've had today, most of them have had numbers on the slides. It helps if there's always a number on the slide, so if you want to go back to a slide. But the second, we recently had a awards for the pack, three bidders and two did not meet the standard. So one got the standard and then they moved away, they backed out. But I appreciate 
appreciate what was said here today with respect to people that bid and then they didn't meet the standards. The city of Oxnard is not a sloppy city. We're not going to take less than the standards. We got specs. You meet the specs or you don't do business with the city of Oxnard. I expect no less. I expect my city manager to accept no less, and I believe my council members are in the same boat. And I know that you working for the city don't want sloppies. So thank you very much. This me